the tropical resort of Long Island, nestled amid the pristine beauty of Queensland's Whitsundays. A paradise for tourists and for little Lincoln Flynn, an idyllic childhood playground. He was an image of health with this beautiful tanned body <laughs> and these blonde locks and big blue eyes. He was, yeah, he just looked uh, amazing. Three years ago, Lincoln's mum, Michelle, took over as Long Island Resort's general manager. Stepdad, Colin, became maintenance supervisor. <laughs> he was a mad fisherman. He would uh, swim, he would paddle on the paddle boards, anything really outside. <laughs> he wasn't a typical modern city type kid, I guess, who, who spends too much time in front of the TV and the Xbox and the PlayStation. He was actually out there doing it and he loved his life, he really did. A second marriage for both, the island became home for the newly blended family. Eight-year-old Lincoln, his sister Lauren, and Colin's daughter Ashley. And on the list of potential dangers, were bats ever on that? No. No. No, definitely not. Uh, certainly snakes and spiders. Marine uh, stingers, perhaps. Yeah, the irrigangi, but uh, a bat never knew that uh, there was even such a thing as lysivirus. Australian bat lysivirus. It's a modern name for an ancient disease. Because make no mistake, the deadly virus that lurks in our native bat population is Australia's rabies. It's spread the same way, through a bite or scratch. Its victims turn violent and froth at the mouth. And when the lysivirus struck Lincoln Flynn on Australia Day this year, he displayed another classic rabies symptom. You know, and he said to me Friday night he had a temperature and when I gave him some water and Panadol, he thought I was trying to burn him and scald his throat. What, what did he say? Well, Mum, you're burning my throat. I can't have this. He spat it straight back out. I said, don't be silly, it's cold water and, and Panadol, and he said, I can't take it. And that's when I knew that's not normal. Overnight, Lincoln developed seizures. He was admitted to hospital the next morning, but doctors were baffled. A barrage of tests failed to find any answers. We got a lot of, hmm, that's a strange one, that doesn't fit in that box, or this isn't typical. And the only um, first test, I guess, that showed that there's something seriously wrong was the X-ray that showed a whole lot of balloons all throughout, from Lincoln's groin to the top of his neck, literally all throughout his whole chest, which... What, what do you mean by balloons? In like internal like air bubbles, bubbles, almost. Bubbles inside, like rice bubbles, that's the way to describe it. So you could touch Lincoln's skin in and, you could and feel, them. feel them and they would crackle. Each new symptom was more bizarre than the last. Then came the moment that convinced Michelle something terrible was taking control of her little boy. His spasms were worsening and um, he was having a, a few hallucinations um, to the morphine and he just wanted to go home. You know, he was uh, scared. He was scared. You could see that. Um, he just really wanted out at, at that point. And um, that's when he, he knelt up on the bed and ripped out the high V lines. And, um, you know, obviously nurses and doctors come running. And he literally threw them off like they were teeny weeny people. I was an eight year old. An and eight year old. Boy doing and that. it was horrific. And I just looked at him and thought, what is going on? How on earth are you, are you doing this? It wasn't Lincoln, it was the lysivirus. The virus can lay dormant in the body for years before becoming active. Once it does, it's unstoppable. It creeps from nerve cell to nerve cell toward the brain. There, it begins to replicate, causing irreparable damage and driving its host to seek out and attack new victims. It then makes its way to the saliva glands to await transfer into the next host. 
the strength that came through with this virus and, and he had a lot of um, mouth secretions at that time because the virus was trying to escape and impart itself to as many people and, and now you know it, it's, it's just like it all looks back and it was horrific. So this is three hours after the baclofen. Lincoln's seizures became so violent, doctors placed him in an induced coma. He was heavily sedated to, to a level that the doctors had never seen before. But the virus fought back against each new drug, trying to regain control of its host. Every 15 minutes, he would literally, what they call, break through that incredibly heavy sedation, and he would start to have a far more aggressive, if you like, um, convulsion. In this video, Michelle shot for the doctors, Lincoln's face shows signs of the internal struggle. And you can actually see during some of the convulsions at various times, he has tears coming out of his eyes. He was clearly in a huge amount of pain. It's a terrifying disease to, to witness, to see uh, this lovely boy who would go in between periods of actually being very cooperative and pleasant to all of a sudden being unbelievably distressed. It, it, uh, it's quite awful to watch. Ultimately, it's Australia's rabies. That would be right, yes. So when Lincoln was first admitted and had a scan of his brain, the scan actually looked remarkably normal. Dr Joshua Francis, a tropical diseases specialist and Australia's foremost authority on lysivirus, was brought in to lead the hunt for a diagnosis. It had now been more than a week, and every test, including for the bat virus, had come back negative. The testing didn't really reveal an answer. The initial scans of his brain were very normal, which we know can happen in rabies. The spinal fluid that was tested early on in the piece looked completely normal and didn't show any evidence of the, the list of virus. They were asking us a whole range of questions, you know, stinger, spider, you know. Um, they observed uh, his body very close with uh, a magnifying glass, looking for any possible puncture wound. Absolutely. <laughs> Michelle and Colin were aware of a large flying fox colony on Long Island, but as far as they knew, Lincoln had never encountered a bat. Lottie. Ashley. It was his sister Lauren who was able to tell doctors about a scratch he'd shown her two months before. He just basically said this bat came and flew down and scratched me. That's his words. That's just simple and plain and that's yeah. how he describes it. Yeah. No. It didn't look like anything that you needed to worry about. No. And I thought he was going to tell Mum, but mm. obviously not. I certainly didn't notice it and unfortunately he never said anything to us. He said nothing. Nothing. He was a pretty tough little boy. He wouldn't have really worried too much about that. He just didn't know. Um, and that's uh, He just wouldn't have known to um, tell us. OK, come back to me. If Lincoln had told his parents, he might be alive today. A rabies vaccine administered at any time during the two-month incubation period would have stopped the lysivirus in its tracks. So this is 2.30 on Thursday. But once symptoms appear, it's too late. Doctors knew if the second round of tests found lysivirus, it meant a death sentence for Lincoln. The spasms are coming to an end, thank God. To be honest, at that moment, with a focus on looking for lysivirus, suspecting that that was what we were going to find, hoping that we wouldn't. And when you, when you realised it was? When we realised it was, yeah, it was devastating. And having to have that conversation with the family, knowing that uh, the outcome was likely to be fatal, was difficult. Then all of a sudden we see all these doctors that we didn't know. Did, did that worry you? Did you think this is not... Y yeah, we cool. did because they couldn't really look at us at first. Yeah, what? so they took us into this room and told us that um, the results had come back for positive to lysivirus. Man. And did you know what that meant? Not really. I said, OK, great, so now we can treat it. And then, you know, there's sort of like silence in the room. And they said, no, this is, is fatal. At one point, the doctors briefly brought Lincoln out of his coma. So Michelle and Colin had the chance to speak to him. It was to be the last time they'd hear his voice. He first said um, that he was sorry. That were his first words. Yeah, I'm sorry. 
And he said, I love your dad. I love your mum. Yep. And he, he, he wasn't doing it. He wasn't. I'm uh, not doing it. This is the convulsions. Because we said, you know, you got you to stop. He goes, I'm not doing it. And He can't control yeah. it. In those moments, Lincoln confirmed he'd been scratched by a bat on Long Island. And he told his parents he knew he was dying. He said, I'm dying. I told him, don't be stupid. I said, don't be stupid. We've got the best doctors we got around the world looking at you. You're not dying. That's just not an option. But do you think he understood he was going to die? I don't know. He knew, though, that something was terribly wrong. He did, yeah. When did you realise that you had to surrender? Um, it was probably the um, Wednesday after the EEG because he came back isotonic. Which is no brain, no brain activity. activity at all. Yeah. And, you know, I just kept telling myself that it was the steroids, but it was the virus. Lincoln's 28 day fight for life ended on Friday, February the 22nd. He became the third person in history to be killed by Australia's rabies. All three deaths from the Lyssa virus have occurred here in tropical Queensland. But the truth is, bats infected with this virus have been found in just about every state in Australia. And most nights, thousands of bats fill our skies above towns and cities and live in huge colonies beside us. It stands to reason that any one of those could be carrying the virus. Australia bat Lissa virus was only identified in 1996, and scientists are still grappling with its mysteries. Just last month came a new disturbing development when the virus jumped species and was found in horses. We are unashamedly uh, putting people ahead of bats to make sure that we address community concerns around colonies of flying foxes. The Queensland government has a tough people before bats policy. Last year, a total shooting ban was lifted for farmers and rural communities were actively encouraged to disperse troublesome colonies. But Environment Minister Andrew Powell hasn't shown the same commitment to alerting the public to the dangers of Lysavirus in the wake of Lincoln's death. You know where that occurred? Uh, I do not know where that occurred. Uh, we have respected the decision of the family. Uh, they have sought privacy and we have respected that confidentiality. You, you don't know where that happened? Uh, the, the main point here is that any flying fox, any microbat in any colony could potentially carry these uh, deadly diseases. Before he died, Lincoln confirmed it was here on the Long Island Resort tennis courts that a flying fox had swooped down and scratched his wrist. It belonged to a colony of hundreds, which still roosts directly above the resort's kids' club. There are no signs to warn tourists that bats carry the virus or that this was the site of a fatal attack. Does it disturb you that this colony sits above a designated children's play area on this island? Uh, it disturbs me that these colonies are in locations that are inappropriate. That's why we have taken the action to make sure that the health and well-being of individuals and communities is put first. There is nothing there to tell people that bats are a risk. Is that not just the very least we should do? Uh, we constantly, and I will continually and have done, uh, put the message out there that if you come in contact with a bat, or a flying fox, you need to seek medical assistance. No bats from the island colony were tested for the Lyssa virus. No research was done. In fact, no state government official even set foot on the island. Are you worried about the implications for the tourist business? Uh, I will work with the tourism industry, I will work with businesses, I will work with communities, individuals. But I would say to you, if this eight-year-old had understood that a contact with a bat uh, 
could be fatal. He might have told his parents that he'd had that contact. Uh, I, my sympathies to the family. Uh, I, I am very concerned. I understand concerned. your sympathies, but I my point very... is that A, the public doesn't know where this is happening. B, this child didn't know and could be alive today. The reality is this could happen in any of a number of locations around Queensland. And so the message clearly is that if you come in contact with any bat, any flying fox, please seek medical assistance as soon as possible. If Lincoln had received medical treatment before the symptoms appeared, it's almost certain he'd be alive today. And that's what his parents find the hardest to be. Unhumane, really, to watch what we watched. You had to watch your little boy be transformed. Literally. Yeah. And that's what this virus did. It was like torture. It was yeah. like literal torture. Because you now know that a rabies vaccine could have, most likely would have, saved yeah. Lincoln. That's the horror. You might have been able to do something. As parents, oh, that's right. you as parents that, that, that haunts us every day, if we had known. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would haunt us all. That's right. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.